Hello, my name is Grant Clayton, owner of 1% List, and today we're gonna to talk about managing a virtual office. So, one of the beauties of our company is you have the option, and let me stress option, to not have a physical location. The biggest expense of every traditional real estate broker is a big, huge brick and mortar office with wonderful furniture and lots of assistants and secretaries and coffee and donuts and food and all these wonderful things. So, one of the perks of us is you can choose to work from your house. You can choose to work from like an office sharing space. You can choose to do any of a number of things. So here's how to operate as a real estate broker if you choose to go virtual, okay? Number one, the importance of systems. I cannot stress this enough. The importance of systems, okay? You need a, you need a system for doing everything. And having a system for doing everything is important even if you have a brick and mortar office, but if you don't have a brick and mortar office, if you are operating virtually, all of your employees, all of your agents, all of your people, they need to understand what's expected of them given any situation. If I have a listing, I need to do this. If I have a buyer, I need to do this. In order to close out a file, I need to do this. There will be training videos for all those things, for how to close out those things and checklists and all those systems. But if you go virtual, it's even more important to have those systems in place because you are not going to see these people every day. You're not gonna be able to walk down the hall and go talk to your secretary. Okay, you're not gonna be able to do that. So it's important that your secretary know what to do, okay? It's important that all of your people know what to do in any given situation and having very strong, very good systems and checklists is important for that. Number two, just because you are operating out of a virtual office and you're not having rah-rah meetings every day doesn't mean that you don't need to talk to your agents. Your agents still need to hear from you. You need to call and check up on your agents. You need to tell your agents happy birthday, okay? You need to comment on their pictures on social media. You need to form a relationship with them where they like you, you like them, and they feel like you're rooting for them. It can't be at arm's length. You can't feel like you're unapproachable just because they can't walk into an office and meet with you from nine to five every day, okay? You still have to form that relationship. In many ways, I would argue that having a virtual office makes it more of a priority to do that, but it also makes it a little bit more heartfelt when you're reaching out because it's very easy to sit in your office and say, well, why didn't you come to my office? But now it makes the responsibility more so on you to reach out and form those relationships, which are incredibly important. Number three, virtual does not mean hands off, okay? Take, it, take time to look at your agent's files, take time to check in with your, your secretaries and, and people like that and just check in. Hey, what are you working on today? Hey, what's going on? Hey, can I help you with stuff? Hey, I see you're working on this file. Hey, that's awesome. If an agent comes through and they put some big awesome house under contract, make it a point to let that agent know it's awesome. Even if it's not going in a whiteboard in the conference room at a brick and mortar office, let them know you noticed. Let them know you're, you're paying attention and you care and then it's important to you and make them feel that. You're gonna have a much better relationship with your agents if you do that. Number four, this is the, the big question. Is an office right for me, okay? So we just got through going through all the points of should I go virtual, should I have an office, should I not have an office? Look, there's a lot of reasons not to have an office, okay? The furniture, the donuts, the coffee, the copying machines. you got more disposable income to spend on marketing, whether it be billboards or digital marketing or all those things. And by the way, we have guides for how to spend money on all that stuff. But here's the thing. You might already have an office. You might own an office and it might be in a great location. Am I telling you, hey, close up shop and just go work from your home office? No, I'm not. It might be great to keep that office. It might be great to get an office. You might find one that's up for sale or for rent in a great location and you're like, you know what? I need one more listing a month to pay for this office and I think I'm gonna get an extra three or four just from all the traffic. Hey, great, okay? But the beauty of our company is you get to ask yourself the question and you get to see if it makes sense, okay? If you have an office and it's panning out for you, great. You need to look at an office just like you look at any other form of marketing. Is this cash flow positive for me? If it's cash flow positive for you, great, okay? But make it a point to know these things. Make it a point to know, ask your, your, your new clients that you don't know, hey, where'd you see us? And if they say, oh, I drive by your office every day, you know what, keep your office. But if not, maybe spend the money on Google, maybe spend the money on Facebook. The point is you got some options. This is Grant Clayton, owner of 1% List. Thank you for watching the video as to whether or not a virtual office is right for you or 
whatever else. Thank you for watching the video and have a great day.